Let's talk about using SQL in Cardo. So in previous videos, I talked about using analysis in Cardo to filter your data layers. Sometimes that level of filtering is not going to be sufficient for whatever you're doing. So I want to show you SQL as uh, another way of taking care of that kind of task. Also going to show you SQL as a way to understand your data and modify your data sometimes. So if I'm here on my map of um, all the earthquakes for this particular time period, I might want to filter to look at earthquakes just over a certain magnitude. And as I said, you could do this with analysis, but you can also do it with SQL. So if I click on a layer on the data tab, you see all of the fields are mentioned here. But if we look all the way down at the bottom left, there's a values and an SQL switch. If I click that switch, it takes me to the SQL area, which should look similar to the other code editing areas. Um, and you see that it is always going to be select star from your username, in this case mine is browsefo again, dot the name of the data set. So if I go over to my data sets, I have a data set named Earthquakes 3, and that's what it's referring to here. So select star from my table is basically what it's saying. When it says select star, that means select all of the columns. <clears throat> and by default, selecting all of the columns is fine for what we're doing. So I want to look at doing some SQL filtering to say um, find over a certain magnitude. Let's find magnitude. Here's the magnitude column. Let's say only find above a 4.5. So to do that, I'm going to go here. Let's make the code a little bit bigger. How's that? OK. So I'm going to say select star from my data set where, and then the name of the column, which is mag in this case, greater than 4.5, 4.5. And when I hit apply, if we're in the table view, you'll see that the table view updates and it only shows the features amongst those that you um, are filtering for. If I go to the map view, you'll see that there are fewer earthquakes here, especially noticeably up around Alaska. So if I clear this, you should see that it resets back to the previous statement and you see that there are many more earthquakes, right? So one situation where it's nice to um, be able to use SQL is if you had multiple things that you wanted to select on. So let's say um, I want to look at depth above a certain level and the magnitude above a certain level. So I might say where depth greater than 15 and mag greater than 4. When I save, let's see how many. Um, so it's, it's nice to look at the table view just to make sure that it actually matches your expectations. We don't have any depths below 15. We don't have any magnitudes below 4. And if we look at the map, you see that it's definitely, let's see, it's still loading. Let's give it a sec. All right. So it's definitely, um, you see zero around here. Um, and we can clear that and compare if we like. See? Um, and we can hit this undo button if we actually wanted to go back to our previous SQL and hit apply. OK. Um, so that's basic SQL um, for the most part when you're in a map what you're going to do is add where 
and this can be all caps or not. It's not case sensitive. You'll often see it all caps. And then you will say column, some operator, some value, and you can string these together with and. What if we wanted a specific range of depths? Well, you can't say, it's, it's common to want to say and say less than 45 to get a depth between 15 and 45, right? But if I hit save, you'll see there's an error here. And it's not super helpful. It says there's syntax error near the less than sign. You can't just say less than after an and. You have to say the column name again. So where the depth is greater than 15 and less than 45. And when I hit save, we should see even fewer earthquakes show up now. We're making more and more specific um, queries. Um, okay, so that's those are numeric queries. We might want to look at a text field. So, for example, we might look at the net. It looks like most of these are in the U.S. So I'm going to clear, and I want to I want to see what other values are in the net column. Or maybe we'll use location source. So there you see US, AK, PR. So what if we want to just see where the location source is either AK or PR? So I can say where location, and you'll see that it auto fills for me. I can either click that or hit enter. I'll hit enter, equal sign, and then in single quotes, AK. And if I run that, you should see that location source is always AK now. And if I wanted to add PR to that, if I said and location source equals PR, that is going to say the location source has to be AK and it has to be PR. So I shouldn't get any results when I do that, right? It's empty. There is no data. Um, so what you actually want to say is or. You're saying, I want rows where either this is the case or this other thing is the case. And when I run that, you should see, if I look at the location source, cool. It's, you see some AKs and some PRs, some more AKs, and back and forth. And if I go to the map, it's pretty predictable um, that we have a bunch in Alaska. The source is AK Alaska, and a bunch in Puerto Rico, uh, because that's the location source in that case. You can also add in um, things like magnitude. So you can get more and more complicated here if you wanted to. To do that, first I'm going to add parentheses around the ORs to say either of those, that should be fine, that shouldn't change anything, right? What if I want something that came from AK or PR and the magnitude is above a certain number? To do that, I say and mag greater than 5. We'll see. If any matched that criteria, I could have been too specific here. So it looks like I was too specific. It looks like we have zero earthquakes that match those criteria. And to be totally sure, I'll look at the table view. And yes, there is no data. So why don't we make the magnitude lower? Still nothing. All right, 3.5? There we go. Okay, so um, that's. Let's look for mag. Okay, yeah, you see that the magnitude is generally in the threes for these location sources. So when we limit it, we had to lower it and lower it. Um, okay, so that's. That is selecting with the and and or conditions. The reason I added parentheses here is you don't want to, um,
because if you do not put parentheses around them, then the SQL is going to say either the location source is AK or the location source is PR and the magnitude is over 3.5. Let's run that and see. So now you see we get all of the things with location source is AK and then only the things where location source is PR and the magnitude is over 3.5. So when we want to group these to say either of these location sources and then coincidentally some other conditions, that's when we use these parentheses. Okay. So that is um, that is how you use simple SQL for for filtering the data that you show on your map. As you've done this, you'll see that there's an SQL icon here just reminding you that you've run some SQL on this layer. You can go ahead and do whatever you want with this, including analysis, as I cover in another video, or um, style it as you would any other layer. For the most part, it's going to act like um, act like any other layer you're used to using in Cardo. Right? I'll just give this a second to to prove that I'm not lying about this. There we go. Great. Okay, so I want to show you a couple of other ways to use SQL. One way that I like to do that is um, we can click on the link under the layer name and go to just the data set. And this can be a nice place to research my data a little bit. So remember earlier, if I go back to my data view and look at the SQL, remember earlier I was having a hard time finding the proper magnitudes to use for these location sources? Well, from my data view, I might run some SQL. Similarly, it's down here. And you can see that by default, it's select star from. I can run some SQL here, and it's just going to update the table view. And if I want to, I can hit preview, and that's going to show me a map. Should look very familiar at this point. But what I like about this is if I get rid of the magnitude and apply it, what I can do is, instead of selecting all of the columns, maybe I don't want all the columns, but maybe I want to find out what the range of magnitudes is that's available to me. So I can type other things besides star here. For example, I could just select mag, and that will just select the magnitude column. And there you can get an idea of what the magnitudes are in this data set. If I just wanted to select the minimum and the maximum here, I can say min, and in parentheses, the name of the field. And you see that it's 2.5. What if I also want to see the maximum? Well, I can either go back here and change min to max, like that, or I could add it as another column. So I could say min mag, and then a comma. And that will create two columns. One's the min and one is the max. So now you can see, OK, the range of my magnitude column is 2.5 to 4.3 for these two location sources. Right? So before I was doing some guesswork to see uh, what magnitude might work for what I was trying to do, now I can see OK, these are the magnitudes that will actually work. Finally, I might also want to find the average. It's simply AVG. So you can see 2.5 to 4.3 is a bit closer to the minimums. It's around 2.9. Um, so I like using this um, console 
when I'm not totally sure what I'm working with in my data set. Finally, uh, you might also want to look at count. So count. Traditionally, when we're writing SQL, we'll just say count star. So count all the columns. Um, and that's going to count the number of rows that match our conditions here. So there are 365 earthquakes. Their minimum magnitude is 2.5. The average magnitude is 2.9. The maximum magnitude is 4.3. Now, if I get rid of my where condition here, it's going to show me for the whole data set, not just the ones with those particular location sources, right? I can undo that. I could just look at the location source AK and see how that stacks up. You'll see that uh, it's pretty similar to when we were looking at PR also, right? We could look at just PR. Oops. Just delete phase. When you have a query like this one, there's no way to map this. So there's no preview button, right? Um, there is a create map button. If I click create map, it's not going to be a very interesting map because there's no, there are no geographies involved there. It's going to be blank. And we're going to get this error. The column does not exist. And I could go down here to the SQL, and I could clear this, and then my uh, data should show up as expected. So that's just a heads up. Sometimes you run SQL, and it's purely for informational purposes, um, not for mapping. And that is fine. Just be aware that you won't always be able to map what you're doing. If, in general, you'll want to say select star if you want to make a map out of it. There are situations where that's not the case, but in general, that is a good rule of thumb. Okay, so we looked at SQL for changing the data that shows up on your map and better understanding the data that is on your map. One more thing I want to show you is changing the data on your map. So if you're used to a traditional GIS software, whether ArcGIS or QGIS or something else, you're probably used to having something like a field calculator where you can create a new column and update that column by using other columns in your data set. And there is a way to do that in Cardo, but you're going to have to use uh, some SQL to do that. So I want to walk through a quick example. And I want to do that by looking at this education data. It's a database of schools in Cabera. It's by the Map Cabera project. It's at mapcabera.org. Um, so I downloaded the education data from here. And you can do that too if you want to follow along. So what I want to do is some of the features have the number of students, as you can see here, and the number of teachers. So I want to calculate the student-teacher ratio. So I should note that the first thing I had to do was I had to change um, these columns. Some of these columns, as you can see, are showing up as strings, which is text. And I had to click the Options button and then change data type and change it to a number. That's going to warn you that you might lose some data. In this case, it's safe, but you only really know when you know your data set whether that is safe or not. Um, so, so that's what I did. I loaded the education data from AppCabera. I changed the students to a number and the teachers to a number as you can see here. And in the SQL, one thing I might do is select just the student-teacher ratio. And that's as simple as students over teachers, students divided by teachers. So how many students are there for every teacher? And 
you'll see oh, some of these are null because some of these didn't have students or teacher values, but you can see as we scroll through, for the most part it did what we wanted it to do. So that's, we're testing out our expression that we will use. Which is always, um, always a good idea. I'll go back to the metadata for now. And I'm going to use the add column feature to add a new column. Uh, new columns get crazy names like this. So I'm going to double click on that, change it to ST ratio, student teacher ratio, and hit enter. Um, it warns you because that might affect maps. Um, seeing as how none of our maps are using this column, it's not a problem. The other thing I need to do is you can see this is marked as a string column right now. I need to change that to a number because we're going to put a number in it. Okay. All right, so we made sure that our columns are all numbers. We made sure that we can calculate the student-teacher ratio, and then we created a column to hold that. All right, so now we need to populate this column with those values that we had set up earlier. How do we want to do that? Um, we want to use SQL, and the SQL we use, it's not going to be select from select from only selects data, it's read only. What we're going to do is update. So I'm going to start at the from and go back and replace that with update. So we're updating our data set name. On the next line I'm going to say set and then my new column name which is ST ratio. So I want to set ST ratio to something. Okay, so all of your update commands are going to look something like this. Update your data set name, set your new column or an existing column name equal to some expression. We could set them all to zero if we wanted to. I'm not going to do that right now. We could set them all to whatever number we want if we wanted to just say zero and hit apply. I don't want to do that though. I want to set it equal to the number of students divided by the number of teachers. And that is going to look like this, divided by teachers. Okay. So what this is going to do is for every row, it's going to say, okay, I need to set the column name, ST ratio, I need to set that equal to whatever the value is of this for that particular row. So when I hit apply, it's going to go through every row in my data set. And it might take a second, depending on how big your database is. But once it's done, you can see here that indeed it does seem to have worked. Again, some of them are going to be null. You can see the teachers is null, so the student-teacher ratio is also null. Um, I'm going to create a map out of this just to be extra sure. And when I create this map, I'm just going to style the points based on ST ratio, right? So right now we're seeing all the points. I'm going to style this. And I'll change the fill size by value and scroll down to ST ratio. Okay, so it's not super dramatic, maybe. Um, maybe I want to do both the size and the color with this T-ratio to get an idea of what we're looking at. So you can see the range here. Um, maybe I want to bump up the max here. Okay, so you can, you can better see um, more students to teachers in a place like this. Um, if I turn on the, I'll turn on a hover info window and scroll down to the ST ratio. Okay, 
So now we should see, okay, the student-teacher ratio there is 56. Here it's 21, here it's 15. So 15 students per teacher. Um, if I wanted to double check my math, I could turn on teachers and students for my info windows. And now when I roll over, go to couple X. Right. So if I wanted to, I could check on my math, but it looks pretty good. Okay, so just to recap, I'll open up my data set again. Just to recap, I created a new column right here. I clicked Add Column. I had to change the name of that column and the data type of that column, and then I used SQL. And if I go to my SQL, I might be able to go back to it. Yep. So your SQL is going to look like Update, Data Set, set and then your new column name equal to something. And that's how you will use SQL to update tables in Cardo.